Okay, so let's um, take a second and talk about data trees. Um, and we're going to just break them down in terms of how they're represented and uh, what all the things mean that we see whenever we look at the Pram Viewer, whenever we look at the panel. Right, so a basic data tree is going to look something like this. Right, um, we're going to think of the green circles as uh, leaves. And these are diagrams that we've produced as a way to clarify exactly what's happening with data trees. So we have leaves, we have these what we're going to call branches, and we have these rings which describe different levels. Right? And you note here in the box on the side, the n equals, this is saying to us how many items there are on each branch. Okay, so if I go to the next uh, slide here, this breaks down what all these parts actually are, right? Our green circles, those are our data items. That could be a number, a point, it could be anything. We're going to call it a leaf, right? The leaf is stored in a list container. So it's stored in a list. So in this case, I have three leaves. In this case, four, one, two, three, five, etc. Right? So if we're talking about points, and we look at this part of the data structure, we would have four points stored on one list here. Right? Um, the other thing to note is the levels. Right? Each time you do a significant transaction or action in your Grasshopper file, you're going to get another level to your data tree. Right? So the data tree grows as you add new relationships, to find new dependencies, or let's say create more points. So here are our levels, and we're going to talk about these as the branch levels in the dark lines. Moving from the, let's say, origin of the file, the beginning of the data structure, we're going to be moving outward through the branch levels, which we've labeled A and B, until we get to the leaf level, which is uh, labeled as N. And that's really to call out in the same way that we see in the uh, panel or in the Pram Viewer also, n equals 5. That's how many items there are. That's the leaf level. Okay, so n equals 5. We have a list of 5 items. Or we'll call it we have 5 leaves. All right, so the last dark line is our current branch level. In this example, we may have said, I want to first define some values that gets me from here to here. I then want to um, create a collection of points, and that gets me from here to here. Sorry. So the sequence of actions getting me to the specific results, that's called the path. You can think of this as navigating through a particular set of streets. Right. First you go straight, then you take the street on the right, and that takes you to the particular location that you're trying to get to. So the path is how we get from the beginning of the data tree to the specific set of elements at the end that are stored at the end of each path. So that is the current branch level, which is B. And here we have 0, 5. That is the specific path to go from the beginning to this end terminating point. Once we've followed that path and we've gone two levels, we can access the list of, in this case, three elements. All right, so the path is also sometimes called the branch. And the path is defined by the sequence of numerical values inside of curly brackets separated by semicolons. OK, so let's go back over to our, our file. And what we're going to do is, instead of representing what we see in the viewport as the index for each item in the list, we want to specify the actual path for each item in the list. So we can see with a label what these things are relative to what path they exist within. All right, so the way we're going to go about doing that is we're going to get another object um, from the sets tree tab called tree statistics. And this object allows us to supply any data structure 
And as a result, we'll get P, L, and C. These are the actual paths of the data tree. L is the length of each branch in the tree. And C is how many paths and branches we have in the tree. So if I were to go back to the other uh, display option for my Pram Viewer, you'll see that we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, etc. N equals 10 and data with 9 branches. This object gives all of that information as an output to these three nodes that are on the right side of this object. Okay, so um, I'm going to take a, a duplicate of this panel and by tapping my Alt key, and I'm going to put the result of P into it. Now, how many levels do you think that this data tree has? Well, if we look at how many index values are in each uh, one of these paths, we have three. You can also verify that by looking at the uh, data tree viewer, the Pram viewer, by double-clicking it. So it, if you see three rings, that means that there are three levels to the data tree. And this is now actually coming out as a list. Note the fancy wires. All right, so somehow we want to relate these elements here with these points in space here. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is I'm going to uh, hide my uh, pointless display. And um, I'll delete this so we have a little bit more room. All right? So we want to again the uh, we want to show the path on the point. And again, the tree statistics comes from sets tree tree statistics. And as a refresher, the Pram viewer comes from Pram's utility Pram viewer. Okay. So we want these paths to go uh, to these points, right? So let's go ahead and um, find the vector point text tag 3D object. <clears throat> and uh, this object asks for the location of the text tag, the text to display, and then the size of the text if you want to specify. All right, so we're going to use this to say that these list values, this list of paths here, will go onto these points. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the point output to L. That just specifies the location. All right. So this is the location. Now. We knew from a second ago that the uh, output of P here is returning to us what? A data tree or a list? Does anyone have a, yeah, it's a list. Okay, so um, if you go ahead and save, we'll connect this, but we're going to see something um, not correct happen. All right, something's funky with our um, our text tag object. It's not actually showing us what uh, should be shown. So the reason for that is that we have a list of values going into T, but a data tree going into L. So what we're going to do is we're going to grow our data tree from P so that it corresponds with the data tree coming into L. Now. If we want to go from a list to a data tree, we use an object previously that does this. Do you guys remember what, what it was? It was the graft. So let's go back to sets tree graft. So here's my list. It's going to go in here. Now I have a data tree, and now I can supply this to T. All right, and if you want, you can go ahead and drop a slider in to make your font a little bit smaller. Sorry, that goes into the S input. 
All right. So now we see, in the same way that we had the list of indices visible, we now can see the actual path that's associated with each list. So this point resides on this path, this point on this path, this point on this path, etc. All right. So right now you can see what the um, relationships are between all of the values, um, all the points that have consistent path indices. Right? So all of these say 0, 0, 008, so they are on the same list. Right? So they're understood as a in this case a column of points. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so before we go any further, does anyone have any questions about the um, tree and how it's organized? And what we are actually seeing when we look at the param viewer? So if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, drop your question into the questions window. No questions? You guys all comfortable with trees? Aha. Is there a way to display the leaf value at I? Okay, so here we don't have visible the index uh, for each one of these items. So in the case of the rhino file, then uh, the grasshopper file we're building up, um, the question is how can you also show I? Well, if you wanted to, you could turn this on. It could be a different size. And you have a kind of funky uh, result from overlapping text. Right? Another way is to work with our data structure objects that we already have to actually see how they're organized both in terms of their column position as well as their index position. Does anybody have any suggestions on what I might do right here before I complete the rest of this file in order to do so? Yep, you you guys are sharp. It's graphed. So let's go to sets, tree, graphed. And I'm going to first graph my points and then replace all of my inputs, including my text tag 3D. And now you can see we have now four values because we've grown our data tree with the graft, showing 0, 0, 0, 1 in this case, and next to it, 0, 0, 1, 1. So if we focus on the last two index values within this path, that's going to show us where we are within the grid. So now I'd say we actually have a grid because it's ordered in a very specific way. There was a grid here when we had it in columns, and now it's definitely even more so of a grid. We have more ways to describe how it's organized by grafting points before we move on. All right, really well done. So I'm going to close this file and we're going to go on to the next uh, topic.